Hey guys, welcome to Griffo's Retro Gaming for a Doncaster Gaming Market special, which was, I'm filming this a week after the event, so yeah, busy, I know, I do apologise, but yeah, what a day, absolutely fantastic from start to finish, and I think that's reflected in what I've actually picked up as well, I've got 30 odd games to get through here, so <laughs> some of them I will be flying through, but I um, must be honest that some of them were gifts, so uh, that, you know, I'll get through all that in a moment. But I just want to talk about the actual day because just after Christmas, you're expecting a gaming market to be quite quiet. And the fact that we're in a cost of living crisis, I, w I wasn't expecting much, but I would say it was among the busiest it's ever been. It was so difficult to get to the actual tables to see what there was. People were just everywhere. And I suppose it's good if you like the hustle and bustle, but I was there to buy games, you know, I wanted to get to the tables. But, <laughs> yeah, I, great for the traders, obviously, if, uh, if they actually, you know, sold as much as what it looked like was being sold. So, yeah, great in that respect. I also got to meet a lot of the YouTubers. Now, if I miss anybody out here, I do apologise. And I'm going to put a link to all the channels in the description of this video, so do check them out. There's fantastic guys, all of them. So the first one that I met was somebody I've not met before, and that was James at Retro Import Gamer. And... Um, he was behind me in the queue, so I called him over and, you know, got him to stand with me. But, yeah, really nice guy. Never met him before, like I say, and thick Birmingham accent, but such a nice guy to speak to. And, yeah, I was just gassing away for the best part of 40 minutes before we went in, to be honest, because we was in the queue waiting for that long. Um, the other person, or the other two people I'd not met before, one was Dave at... Retro games played badly. Dave Retro Games played badly. And he, he's a character. Absolutely fantastic. So finally meet him as well. Um, amazing channel. Do check it out. 
he's picked up some really good stuff and one one item he picked up I could not believe the price of it so I do know he's already put the video out do check it out and the final person I've not met before was Daily at Daily Retro I'm not overly familiar with his um, YouTube channel and that was reflected in the fact that he didn't know who I was as well but yeah good to meet you daily and um, I will check your channel out but the other people who I have met before it was great to see them again so some really really nice people that I, I really enjoy meeting and you know that's Pete from Pete Fighter I don't know if he's still got his channel but really nice guy really nice guy he actually gave me some gifts as well, which I wasn't expecting. I wasn't to begin with until uh, Nerf let the cat out of the bag and said, I think Pete Fighter's coming, but he's got something for you. Has he? <laughs> so, yeah, cheers. <laughs> but, yeah, that was uh, Nerf, Nerf Retro 1. Um, I picked up a game for him as well. I got a big bundle, which I'll go into in a moment, and uh, one of the games I gave to him, so... If he does a video, because I don't think he's on the tubes so much at the moment, do check it out. Uh, Sean, uh, Retro Games Revived, really nice guy. He was there with uh, Joe as well. And yeah, he brought some PlayStation 2 games for me, so thank you very much, Sean. And then there was Dana. He was stalling. Um, Stu. To the UK, he was stalling. There was also LL Cool Games there, which I believe is Wishwash Lewis. Uh, his channel's Wishwash, and I never saw him there, but that is, I'm almost certain that's his stall. And uh, who else was he? Some others. Racking my brain here. Oh, there was Jim Corbana as well. I can't think of anyone else. So I do apologise if I've missed you out, but yeah, great to meet you all again, as always is. So, I'm going to go into the games now, and when I first got in, I went over to Stu's stall, I, I normally do, I don't know why I always go to Stu's stall, and um, then over to Dana's, that's like a ritual now, but yeah, I went over to Stu's stall, and Nathan had come up to me and said, Griffo, there's like a stall there that's for charity and they're selling Xbox 360 games 10 for 5 quid. Like, really? <laughs> Went straight over to it and wow. He had... All the games were in such lovely condition and um, I ended... The £5 was a suggested um, like contribution so I gave him a tenner. I picked up 12 games. One of them was for Nerf but yeah, I... It was well, I think the total value of the games I picked up was 25 quid, so yeah, fair's fair in it, really. And um, yeah, there was three PlayStation 3 games. One of them I think I may have, unless it's the um, another game in that series, but I'll just go through them now. And the first game is Killzone 2. Now, with the PS3, I pick up games that are exclusive or that you can't get on um, the Xbox anyway. And that's because I collect Xbox 360, so there's no point in having loads of games on the same system. But, although I will contradict that in a moment. But <laughs> yeah, Killzone 2, first person shooter. They're alright, not bad at all, the ones I've played. Next one is the one that I think I've got, unless it's number one, and that is Infamous 2. And, yeah, it's, again, it's a decent game. The, or the first one is. I've never played number two, so... These are all in really nice condition. I was told as well that he... He'd sold a load before the place had opened, all the other traders had been over and got some really good games off him, unfortunately. But, yeah, I've managed to pick up some... A couple of games I didn't have and some upgrades and even a collector's edition, so I can't grumble at what I picked up. But anyway, the last game as well is Resistance 3. I always considered this a poor man's 
uh, Gears of War. I know people are late me for saying that, but yeah, it's a good game in its own right. Oh, the, the ones I've played, but the, they're okay. So the Xbox 360 games that I got. The first one is one that I needed, and it is Wheelman, starring Vin Diesel. Don't know much about it, but I haven't got it all complete. Next up is a game that I do have. Now, I know I had it on the PSP, but I was a bit unsure if I had it on the 360, but it is WWE All-Stars. Fantastic game anyway, but yeah, I do already have it, unfortunately. Next up is Metro Last Light, and... There's something about this one. It includes oh right, yeah, includes codes. It's a limited edition, so I think it's got uh, DLC. But Metro games are alright, not my favourite, but they're okay. Next up is one from a series that I really don't like and it's Dynasty Warriors. You just go fighting hordes and hordes of enemies. Some people really like it, I'm not overly fussed, but still. It's in the collection now. Another one is Quake 4, and I do enjoy these Quake games, and um, Doom and all that type of thing. And this one comes with a bonus CD, DVD, and it says Quake 4, the making of, and Quake 2. It just says Quake 2, so I don't know if it's got the game Quake 2 on there, if it has. That's fantastic. But, yeah, good one to get that. Next up is uh, Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Blacklist. Don't know anything about it. I'm not keen on the Splinter Cell games. I maybe should give them a better go, but <laughs> better with Connect Sensor, yeah, right. Um, this is a Game of the Year edition, and it's, it's only Borderlands. I don't think I've got the Game of the Year edition. I'm pretty sure the Borderlands I've got is the standard one with the slipcase, so... What I'm going to do is take the slipcase off, put it on here. People are like me for this, but, but yeah, there's method to my madness, and yeah. Because it says classics on the side, and I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, it comes with a map as well. My other one didn't have a map of Pandora. So, there's also a making of DVD as well, I believe. Or the expansion disc. But yeah, good to have that. I think I've also got Borderlands and Borderlands 2 in a double pack. And the last one, a collector's edition, is Dragon Age. And I'm sure I have one with a slipcase, but this has a slipcase and a bonus disc as well, which has got making of uh, soundtrack, wallpapers and more, it says so. Uh, yeah, really good to upgrade a few of the things I already had. And for £10, <laughs> like, some of them games for £10, you've got Infamous, Resistance, Borderlands, Quake. You can't grumble, can you? So, yeah, delighted with all them. So, I think after that is when I met Sean and Pete at Pete Fighter. So, it's only fair that I go through their games that they got me. And I'll start with Pete Fighter, who brought me a load of cartridges for the Evercade. I did pick up an Evercade last year. And yeah, he said, I've got some games for you, just take the ones you want. And I'm looking through them. I couldn't remember which ones I had and which I didn't have. Because the Evercade that I got came with three games. It's a premium pack or something, so I couldn't for the life of me remember, but he said, just bloody take them all. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, I'll show you what I have. And I have worked out that these three I already have. So, if you do need them, let me know and I can post them out to you. Free of charge, obviously. I, I, I hardly ever charge anyway, but um, it'd be wrong for me to even suggest charging for these as there was a gift anyway. But first one is Atari Collection 1. And it's got 20 classic Atari games on there. 
which include centipede, as you would expect, missile command, all that type of stuff, all that good stuff, tempest even. And yeah, they all come with the little booklets as well, which has a little bit of info on each of the games. Next one is a great little um, disc. It's only got six games on it, but some really good ones on it. And that is the Interplay one, which has got Boogerman, which is a platform S, a bit like Airform Gym, which is also on there. You've got Clay Fighter, which is obviously a fighter. Battle Chess, I used to play on the Amiga. Um, when you when you move a piece onto another piece, they have a little battle. And then there's two games that I don't know. Actually, one is Incantation, which I said when I picked up the Evercade that I actually liked. It reminded me of Magic Pockets of the Amiga. And the other one's Titan, which I haven't played. So, yeah, good little disc, that one. Oh, cartridge, I should say. And the final one is Namco Museum. And that one's got Pac-Man, Dig Dug, uh, Galaxian, Xevious. So among other games, so that's a good little one as well, so yeah, if you need those, let me know, do let me know and I'll post them out to you, or if you only need one, let me know, I'll post it out. So the other ones that I got, there was one that I really wanted, in fact I'll start with that one, and it is the Codemasters one, because it comes with Cannon Fodder, which I used to love, and Sensible Soccer as well, which is just, you can't beat that. But there's some other games on there as well, like Megalomania, which I remember off the... I don't know if it was on the SNES, but it was definitely on the Mega Drive. <coughs> uh, Super Skid Marks, which I always always used to make me laugh. It's got like a cow on wheels with shades on and the, uh, the fairy dice. I'll put a picture of that up. It's one of the worst bloody um, like front covers on a game ever, but yeah. The name of it, Super Skid Marks, makes me laugh as well. So yeah, some some decent games on there, which, let's be honest, I'm only ever going to play Sensible Soccer and Cannon Fodder anyway. <laughs> so yeah, great to get that one. Next up is Data East Collection 1. And this has got some good games on it as well, like Bad Dudes, Two Crew Dudes, Sad Pocket, which I've got on the... Um, Game Boy? Uh, yeah, on the Game Boy. Magical Drop, which is a good little puzzler. And Joan Mac 2, Burger Time. And then some games which I'm not too familiar with. Karate Champ and uh, Midnight Resistance. Burning Rubber. So, yeah, another decent one to get. Nang... Namco Museum 2, which includes Pack Attack, Gallagher, Warp Man, Dig Dug 2, and it's got Splatterhouse Part 2 and 3 on it, which I've never played. I've played the first one, but not played those. And one called Medica again. One called Mega Cat Studios, which I aren't familiar with at all, so I don't know if this is an indie sort of collection. It's Mega Cat Studios Collection 2 as well, but um, Rome, Meow, and Julie Cat. I, God knows what that is, but obviously to do with cats. But yeah, I can't expand on that, unfortunately, so I'll just have to play that and see what it's like. So, Pete, thank you very much for those. I, just for sensible soccer alone, it's amazing. But yeah, if you, like I say as well, if you need the other ones, let me know and I'll post them out. And Sean had put up a load of PS2 games on our WhatsApp group. Said if you need any, let us know. And yeah, there was a few that I wanted, and um, he said he was going to post them out. Never did, but he brought them. By surprise, I wasn't pressing him at all, you know. But, yeah, he brought them, so I was like, oh, great stuff. Yeah, same as John uh, posting, I guess. So, first one is Sonic Gems collection, and I have... I have a Sonic... What is it? Sonic Mega Plus collection on the original Xbox, which has got a load of them on, but it doesn't have these on, I don't 
well, I'm pretty sure it doesn't have Sonic the Fighters, because I've never even heard of that. Uh, Sonic R, I don't think it's on there, but Sonic CD might be. I'm not too sure. But then it says, six bonus Game Gear Classic, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, which is fantastic on the Game Gear. Sonic Spinball, which I used to love as well. Sonic the Hedgehog Triple Trouble, I've not played. Sonic Drift, Tails Sky Patrol and Tails Adventures, I've not played those either. So, yeah, good little game to get. Then one I have on the original Xbox and the PSP, but I really enjoy it, and that is from Russia With Love, which is a James Bond film starring Sean Connery. And, yeah, it's just <laughs> total James Bond corniness. It's fantastic. If you've not played it, I recommend it. Even on the PSP, it's really good. Really good part on there. Next up is one that isn't on the original Xbox, and I don't think, I might have to double check that, but it's Star Wars Bounty Hunter. Don't know anything about it, but I'm pretty sure it isn't. These are all complete as well. One that is, and that is Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, which I've not played as yet, so I don't know if it's any good, but in Includes a lot of, um, oh, what, what are them things? <sighs> Lightsabers, there you go. Includes a lot of them, so it could be good. <clears throat> Next up, a game I don't know anything about, but looks like a third-person action game, and it is The Mark of Cree. Um... It says on the back the spells and stuff, so it could be good. But I know this one hasn't got instructions, but it's not an issue at all. Just happy to play it, to be honest. Next up is Quake 3 Revolution. And, yeah, I love Quake games. I love Doom games and Wolfenstein and all them. So, really going to enjoy that. And the last one is Superman Shadow of Apocalypse, is it? Yeah, of Apocalypse. And it's, I think it's based on a cartoon version of Superman. I don't think it scored very good, but I'll give it a go regardless. So, yeah, it's, I'll put some um, gameplay footage of these up, but it looks very cartoony. So it could be good. I mean, the graphics will hold up if it's cartoony for sure. So, Thank you very much, Sean. Really appreciate that. So, going along, there was a good stall there. I've seen them before. They had some like cheap new games. I say new. They're sealed, but old games. And they're usually from abroad. I picked up a Star Wars game which was from the Middle East I think, but he was selling it for four quid on the PS4 so I couldn't grumble. Plays in English and the other game I got last time was Scribble Note Showdown on the Switch which I think he charged six or seven quid for so again it was okay. Not a great game but that one was in English so yeah there were some games there and the only one I really fancied was Dante's Inferno on the PSP. What a game Dante's Inferno is. I've played it on the Xbox 360 and it's essentially God of War but with a different skin and story. But the gameplay is exactly the same. Some slight differences. However, this is a German one. I thought, well, that's not an issue. It is an issue. It only plays in German. <laughs> Thankfully, it's an action game, but if it was a RPG, I'd be buggered. But, yeah, I'm going to still be on the lookout for this, um, the, pal, uh, the English version, because I want to play it in English. But for now, that's okay. And, yes, it looks really nice as well. Not as good as a PS3 and Xbox 360 version, but... If you can get older, then fantastic game. 
Okay, so next up was Dana at Hidden Chess Gaming. I should point out that at the end of this month, I think on the 28th, he's holding a, a gaming fair market in Briarley Hill, Birmingham, sort of way. And yeah, unfortunately, I won't get to that one, but I would love to. If not, I'll definitely be at the next one. It's just so close to the Doncaster one, I'm spent up, unfortunately. But I picked up two games from what I thought was his store. It turns out it was the guy who was with him. It was from his lot. So, sorry, Dana. But, yeah, I got two games off him, and the one that I really wanted, managed to get, and that was Dragon Quest VIII, Journey of the Cursed King, on the PS2. And this is what I wanted. And reason being is I have it for the... 3DS, what a game. It's really good on the 3DS, so I thought, well, I want it on the PS2 as well. There's some slight differences, like you don't see the monsters in the overworld like you do on the 3DS. And it's a bit more jagged around the edges where the 3DS one's a bit sharper and nicer. But still, I'm really happy to own that. I love Dragon Quest. So it says 11. On the front, I think I got it for 10. I'm not going to grumble at that. I think in CEX it's 15 quid. So, yeah, really happy with that. Thank you very much. Dana's mate. <laughs> and uh, the next one I got, this is American, but it's for the PSP, so it doesn't matter. And it is Death Junior 2. And Death Junior, the first one, is a really good game. A cartoony... 3D action game where you play as Death Junior <laughs> and in the first one you're on a field trip on the way to a museum and you end up fighting Pandora or you fight with her to get all the stuff back into Pandora's box I don't know the story of this one but if it's anything like the first it'll be fantastic so going around there was another stall which was really cheap. I don't know if he was getting rid of his, all his collection or what, but he had some PS1 games for £3 and there was some really good titles there, really good titles. I'm not talking about valuable, but just like some really good games if you're going to, you know, three quid for a PS1 game and it's like Command and Conquer or whatever, you, you're going to do it. But if you're into that type of thing, it didn't interest me so much, but... I looked under the table and there was some gaming guards there which I do like. I don't normally go for them but I do have quite a decent collection of them. And there was two hardback gaming guards there and I was just having a look at them and it goes £5 each then. Bloody hell because they're at least 10 or each if not 15 quid each online on eBay. So, I took a punt and I bought them, and they need a slight clean, but they're in really good condition still. So, the first one is Final Fantasy thirteen, and for the hardback copy, it looks, it's all white with, like, silver lettering. I don't know if you can see that. It's focusing on my face, but, yeah, it looks so good on a shelf, but... Such nice condition, like I say, just a little bit grubby, but nothing I can't sort out. Uh, next one is Final Fantasy 13 2, which I don't know, I've not played these, so uh, I will now. And <laughs> that's got to be a sequel or a continuation, or I don't know, but yeah. Again, same type of thing. But yeah, just two really nice guards to get. Uh, happy with those for 10 quid. Okay, so next up was Eddie Rollercar. I know for a fact he's selling off a lot of his console gear. So there was some games that I'd already agreed to buy off him, so I just needed to pay and pick him up. And for Great games, I feel. Well, not great games, one of them in, but I'll start with that one anyway. It's for the Wii. And it is Dragon Quest Swords. Again, Dragon Quest, you'll know. 
Um, this one's different. It's less of an RPG and more a... Uh, you have a certain route to go and you fight enemies in first-person view and you use your Wii controller as your sword, basically. So when you swing it, it'll attack enemies like that. This is pristine condition and look at the disc. The Wii really knew how to do nice discs. So, yeah, a bit of a... Bit of a strange one, I guess, really. Not one that people talk about. I don't think it's overly great, but, you know, it's nice to have another Dragon Quest game in the collection. And when I get my Wii set up, I'll definitely be giving it a go. And then I got three PSP games off him. Um, one of them is... It just looks mental. <laughs> One of them is still sealed, so I need to open that, and I will open it. And the last one, or the first one I'm going to show anyway, is Platypus, which is a shooter, horizontal shooter, and it's in the style of Claymation. That's the graphic style on it. I don't think it, it's not like a bullet hell, so you know, there's not loads of things that are going to come out at me at once. But, yeah, I think graphically it's really nice. But gameplay-wise, I don't think it's the best from what I've heard. But, yeah, nice to have it in the collection. It's not one you normally see, and I believe in CEX it's about 15 to 20 quid around that sort of mark. So, yeah, nice to have it in the collection. I do like the, uh, I do like shmups. I'm crap at them, but, you know, they, they are fun. The sealed game is a Mega Man game, and it is Mega Man Maverick Hunter X, and it looks fantastic. Now, the eagle eyes amongst you will know that that's an American copy, but as I keep saying, PSP is region free, so it really doesn't matter. I've got the game. That's all that matters to me. So, yeah, I think this is a 25 to £30 game, in CEX, so if it was sealed, pal, it'd probably be a lot more than that, but yeah, really nice to get that out, can't wait to play it, I do like Mega Man, although, again, I do suck at it. <laughs> and the last PSP game, because I went back to his stall a bit later on and I got a, another DS game, which I'll go through in a minute, but the last PSP game is a real rarity and it is a rising star game so Duncan might uh, his ears might pick up this but it is 30 or half minute hero not 30 minute hero half minute hero and there's there's different game styles on this so it's man blowing it really is I think for there's a fast action RPG which is in the style of the old RPG games and I'm assuming to do that it's just going to be your fights are every 30 seconds I don't know or the last 30 seconds I'm not sure you've got a shooter on there as well so maybe the whole shooter version of the game is 30 seconds I don't know and swift es escort missions where you got to escort a princess and quick-witted strategy games on there as well. So the whole idea is that you need to save the kingdom. And I believe the more 30 seconds you use, the more it goes against you in some sort of way. So, yeah, I can't wait to get into it. It just sounds absolutely nuts. But it's a £30 game again. So, nice to have it in the collection. I won't say what Eddie charged me for them all, but I did definitely get a deal off him. So, thank you very much, Eddie. Um, some great games there that are going in the collection. And yes, I definitely would not like me to open up Seal Games, but I will be opening that one up. I want to play it. With it being American, it doesn't... I'm not as funny about it. And the last game I got off Eddie was um, my last purchase, but I have got another game which I want to show you and just go through. But 
This one is an interesting one. I didn't know anything about it. And it is Mystery Dungeon. And this game, I asked Eddie, it's, it's um, what the Mystery Dungeon games, the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games used. So if you've played those, it plays like that. This one, however, it uses... Um, you can use spells in there and just normal attacks and it says cast spells, transform into base and defeat over 180 monsters so yeah, really intrigued by that one it says 12 on the front, it was £10 and I believe in CEX it's 10 Um but they don't have an awful lot of copies in there so yeah and this is nice condition as well as most of Eddie's things were. Really looking forward to getting stuck into that one. So, I got on to the last game, and this is probably the most expensive game on... Well, not probably, it is the most expensive game in the PAL region on the original Xbox. In CEX... It goes for three hundred and seventy-five. I'll put I'll put a picture on the screen. But when I looked during the week, it was at three hundred and seventy-five pounds. Now I got this for forty-five. It is an American version, so it doesn't hold as much value as the PAL one, which is a lot rarer. It's also not got a manual. But that didn't bother me because I've actually got the game. And <laughs> yeah, people might say, well, it's not a PAL version, but to me, I have the game. And like with my Castlevania game, the Castlevania game is over £100 in PAL regions. I got that for 30 So I, when I bought that one, I thought, that's what I'm going to do. Why spend nearly 400 quid on something when I can just get the American version for the sake of just a letter in the corner, which is usually the only difference. It just makes sense. But anyway, that game is Shaolin Showdown. And I've not played it as yet, but it just looks like a third person. A person? Person. Third person action game. And usually with these um, sort of expensive games, they're a bit rubbish, but we'll see. Uh, it's got Warner Brothers, so I don't know if it's an actual cartoon. Might be an actual cartoon rather than just a, a single IP. But, yeah, playable six playable characters with six signature fighting styles. So, I'll just open this up. It's not in fantastic condition. There's a few dents on the back there. I don't know if you can see. But also not got the instructions. And the disc, it's not great. There is some scratches on there, but nothing too deep. I was a bit unsure whether I should buy it, but Eddie was like, oh, no, for 45 quid you should, because I do believe I saw this before. At the gaming market, it was definitely the same one because I remember that on the back. And it was over 100 quid last time, I think 115. So it dropped it down an awful lot for it to be 45. And then I said, Would you do it for 40? Which you did. So not a bad price whatsoever. And to add that into the collection is phenomenal. Because I'll never see the PAL one, and if I do, I won't be able to afford it. But yeah, going by that as well, I think that's the way I'm going to be going. Sod going for PAL just, you know, just to flex. Nah, I want a full collection, so if it means getting some American versions of games, so be it. I really don't care. And I'll end the video there. That was my day at Doncaster, which... Like I say, I thoroughly enjoyed. There was some really good stuff. And, yeah, um, I can't wait for the next one. I'm gutted I can't go to Birmingham. Um, I do apologise to Dana for that. But um, if you can go, definitely 
go and uh, see what it's like. It should be good. A lot of the usual traders will be there. And, yeah, hopefully it'll be one that'll be every year. So with that in mind, I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you very soon with another video. Take care.